Hello and welcome back and welcome to lecture 2 in this video series. In this video we are going to explore some of the basic functions of SMath including things like defining variables, entering text, uh, entering basic functions, and working with basic units. So a quick review of SMath. Up in your top bar you have all of your oh, basic file operations, new page, create, save, print, that kind of thing. Uh, you have a lot of preferences and options and view options and things like that. Some of these things we'll go into later in, in other, and in other videos in greater detail, but uh, this is we'll kind of gloss over this for now and focus on our main SMath uh, window here. So also you have along the side, you have uh, various inputs and symbols and things. These are all collapsible and you can uh, either have all of them open like I do now. You can have some of them hidden, you can have some of them removed. It's just how you prefer to have your own user interface laid out. So. Um, we saw some of the things that we could do with SMath in the previous video. However, I didn't actually explain how to do any of that. And that's what we're trying to accomplish here today. After this video, you should hopefully be able to uh, define a variable, set up a basic function and work with units at a basic level. So uh, let us consider uh, first, what happens if I just start writing something in SMath? So if I put my cursor again, uh, uh, so if I put my cursor somewhere and uh, notice I have my cursor, which, I move, where, which is where my mouse is moving. And then I have these crosshairs here. This represents just, just like you would have in like a word processor like Word or some other one, Google Documents, etc. This represents where I'm actually typing, where I'm entering data, where I'm entering information, where I'm entering text, etc. So what happens if I just enter text? Let's say I just put down, I don't know, this is text. Well, notice what just happened. Initially, it's, it's trying to define a variable. It's giving me all sorts of options for predefined things, predefined functions, predefined units, all sorts of different things. And it's, it's assuming that I'm trying to enter some sort of math operation. The moment I put in a space, it converts this to a text box. Huh, that's interesting. So we can immediately see that there are two, from this we can immediately see that there are two types of basic entries on a MathCAD worksheet. There are text boxes and functions and variables slash functions. Personally, I don't recommend just uh, starting to type on the page where your cursor is. I think it's easier to start off something uh, to start off a given entry, either assuming or, or defining it as a either a um, either a text box or a variable entry or a function entry. Those are handled the same way. So if I want to, um, let's see, and the key for each of these is for a text box, it's going to be a quotation mark and a variable or function, it's going to be a uh, colon. Oh, I don't want to actually do that and a colon here. What do I mean by this? So um, let's go ahead and show how we can define a text box. So if I want to create a text box, what I'm going to do is I am going to just say, okay, uh, or I'm just going to go and um, press, uh, basically type a quotation mark. So um, I'm going to press shift quotation mark on my keyboard. And I now have a text box. And, and what is special about a text box is that nothing in this box is going to be executed as any form of code or any form of function. It doesn't have any units. It is simply a label. This is a text box. If I can manage to spell the word box correctly. This is a text box. It handles labels and nothing else. So in other words, it doesn't matter what I type in here, it's not going to try to interpret this as a function that, that it needs to do some sort of operation on. All, it's, all the program is going to do is just print this as it runs through the page. All right, what's next? So let's say I want to define a function. Well, I can do this in a couple ways. Uh, so let's look at defining functions. I'm gonna label this here, again, using a text box. So in this section, I'm going to look at defining some functions. Now there's a couple ways to do this, like I said. Uh, the first way you could do this is to press colon. And so if I, if I enter a colon, shift colon, notice what I have here. 
I have now created a definition box or a variable box or a function box. And what this symbol here, this colon equal signs means, is this is a this is basically a label that means, uh, well, actually, I can kind of type it out. Um, if I want to do this, I could actually do this with a text box. In my mind, or not even just in my mind, this uh, essentially means is defined as. And notice, even though I have the symbol here, it's not going to try to actually process this or define this because this is just a text box. So what does this mean? Well, I can say x is defined as 7 or x is defined as 6. And I don't have any units here yet. So again, I can press colon and it will give me a two-sided entry for a definition. Basically, this again is saying something is defined as something. And I can say y is defined as the number 9. And therefore, every time I every time I use the letter y in a function in a, fu in a, in a function or ask it to display uh, the variable y, it will go and display uh, 9 instead of y, or it will use 9 in a calculation. Again, this simply references is defined as. So like and I mentioned, there are two ways to define things. You can use the colon, at which point it just, you can use a colon with an empty cursor uh, and it will simply pop up the, this blank definition. Or you can start typing um, uh, just without using a definition at first. You could say, okay, well, um, let's say X, or well, I already used X, let's say Z. And then I can press colon and now I have basically the other side of that definition statement. And then I could go, this is equal to 10. So now I have basically, now I have, a, now I have not even basically, I have in this program, in this sheet, defined z as equal to the number 10. Again, the way I can do that is I enter a variable and I just uh, press colon. And now it's again pulling up a z is defined as something. And I say, I'm basically telling it right here that Z is defined as the number 12. Now, uh, let's explore some uh, interesting, or let's explore some of the limits of this in terms of variable definition. So um, let's go ahead and delete these. And I want to explore what it look, what, how SMath handles um, different forms of variables. So let's, let's see how complex we can get, what some limits might be, et cetera. So, uh, in the previous ones I just had up there, I used one letter uh, variables, but it doesn't need to be so simple. I could say, oh, I don't know, something like width. Uh, well, let me actually just not put that as, I initially put that in the text box, so that's not correct. So I can say width and now colon. I typed the word width without entering any kind of, without using a uh, quotation mark uh, initially, as that would define it as a text box. I just, again, starting from nothing, I write the word width, and then I press colon, and now I'm going to define width as something. And I could define that as nine, or I could define that as 20. And again, this is just, and this is just a number right now, but shortly you'll be adding units to these things. So if I were then to say two times width, notice this is defined as a custom variable, it knows that width is 20. So now if I then go and tell it, what is that equal? It equals 40. Okay, so there's that. Um, now let's, let's explore, is this case sensitive? So let's try two times width without the capital. Width with the lowercase is not defined. So we know from this that all of these variable labels are case sensitive. And that can be either good or bad, but if you are working with a system with a lot of variables, it can be actually be, and especially in things like, uh, sometimes we, we, if you're using um, specific versus mass quantities, uh, in other words, like a, you might have a, I don't know, like something like a, uh, a total amount of energy and then an energy per kilogram or something. It, it can be very useful to have uh, variables with the same variables in upper and lower case, and depending on the system you're working with. All right, so what's next? Right, now, notice what I did here is I had another equal sign. 
um, or had an equal sign and it output a um, it output the number and it outputted the results of a calculation so we have seen here how to define variables but how do we define functions or how do we um, how, how, yes how do we define functions so let's say I have width equals 20 and maybe I also want to have a corresponding function length I type first again first I'm going to type the word length and I am going to define this as oh uh, let's just say the number 30 I'm, I'm ignoring units for now so width equals 20 length equals 30 again I entered the word length pressed colon and then entered 30 on the other side so um, I have width and length and the obvious one if we're doing area if we're doing a 2d system would be area now I'm going to define a function that's going to be called area so I I'm going to define this as area I first write the word area then I press colon and uh, then I can define the function it gives me a uh, basically what this is this menu down here is a suggestions menu um, so as I type the heat this it's going to try to come up with suggestions to make me make my typing job easier and if I had a really long variable name this might be useful but uh, this is kind of like a mismatch of user defined functions of units of pre-built functions etc so initially like it's it's offering me to or when it, when it sees the first letter is a capital W so it says okay are what are you talking about Tony are you talking about a um, do you want the unit watt of what you know a um, joule per second is that what you're after well then as I enter more here it eventually sees that okay I'm guessing you want width and so you can either enter the rest of the function you could go with like just width like that or you could go and click on it uh, or if I just had the let's say I'm at the WID I could click on that and it would complete the function again all that is all that menu is is an autocomplete just sort of like a it's like the um, well, autocomplete just like you would have on like a Google search bar or something uh, Google tries to guess what you're gonna ask before you finish asking it and uh, it tries to save you have a second so and SMath tries to do the same thing now I'm gonna say um, area is not just equal to width but it is equal to width times length so I have now defined area is equal to width times length in SMath's, uh, basically in SMath's mind, it knows what a width is. It, it just knows that it's 20. It doesn't know it. It doesn't have any idea of what that 20 is. It doesn't know whether it's feet or meters or, you know, a light year. It doesn't matter. It just knows that width is equal to 20. And also it knows that length is equal to 20. And now I have told it that area is equal to width times length. And it again has no idea what this function area represents. It has no idea that what width represents. These are just labels for functions that I have cr for variables I should say that I have created. Um, it has no concept, co no concept of what these things are. They're just labels, and um, it would be perfectly happy to, um, I don't know, take width to the length power. It, and I could tell this area equals width to the length power and I'd be perfectly happy to execute that because again it has no idea what these are it's just using the these are just labels that we're using now that's all well and good I have told smath that area is equal to width times length but that's not really useful what I really need is some sort of output so I have told um, I have told smath that area is equal to width times length but how do I get smath to spit that back out how do I get it to tell me okay I have done the calculation uh, here is the actual number that I have gotten well you have a couple ways of doing this uh, so remember a colon produces this symbol here the colon equal sign and that is defined it equals uh, this is basically uh, is defined as uh, this symbol here is equivalent to the phrase is defined as now um, if I just want the output though I don't press colon because if I press colon I'll be trying to redefine the function which would be bad instead I press a simple equal sign here notice I have my cursor at the end of my term here and I just pressed equals and that will then execute the function area is equal to width times length or I, sh I should say area is defined as width times length which is then equal to 600 
Again, all I did was press an equal sign to have it actually execute that function or just produce the output for it. So let's go ahead and undo that. I'm going to show you the other way to, do, to get that output. Another way it would be to actually just um, is to, would it be to display it in another line. You could do that as well. Or you could have it in another entry on the same line. So uh, let's say I don't want to, especially this is especially useful for a very long function. Like if you have a very long function with you know a dozen different variables within it, um, often you don't necessarily want to have the uh, output displayed in the same line. So you might do it on a, on a different line, or I might even have this positioned over here somewhere, uh, just depending on where the where I want the output to be produced. Now, basically, I want it to now, uh, again, I have already defined to SMath what the function area is equal to or is defined as. I have told SMath that area is equal to width times length. Now I want the output. And so I, I might be tempted to, to, to use my colon again, uh, to use my colon symbol again and say, OK, uh, area, is, area, is, area is this. But, it, but if I do that, the problem is I'm now trying to redefine the area function. I don't want to redefine the area function. Uh, the width times length is perfectly fine. I just want it to get the result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press equals again, and now it will give me the output. Area is equal to 600. Again, there's no units in this, in this yet, but again, it's just um, area is equal to 600. Okay. So, and that's the basic uh, method of defining functions. I mean, there's a lot more to it, um, and we'll look at some of those, especially on the next couple pages. Um, but that is the basic method of working with functions. They can get much more complicated than this, of course, but um, that really is all there is to it. I mean, the rest is just, is just uh, details. So you define variables, you then go and um, define functions, and then you output them. The three best basic steps of SMath are to, to first define variables, whatever those may be, second, define functions to, that you're going to use those variables for, and then third, go and produce an output. Now, the reason, now uh, again, the, the main reason why we like to create, like, uh, to, the main reason why we like to create sheets, um, like uh, uh, things like SMath sheets and MathCAD sheets and that kind of thing, is that they are, um, they, they are reusable. In other words, if I'm working through, uh, so now if you all are, um, if you've gone through an engineering education, especially if you've reached some of the upper uh, levels like uh, junior and senior level courses, graduate courses, etc., you'll often encounter uh, cases where you have to work through problems that might be, you know, it's not uncommon to work through problems that might have, you know, hand calculations that might involve, you know, a dozen or more pages of hand calculations. And if you make an error, if you have a chain of calculations a dozen or 20 pages long, and you make an error in one location on that, sh on that long, uh, document, that long handwritten document, you have to do every single one of those equations over again. But with something like SMath or MathCAD, all you have to do is define this long worksheet once, and then once you do it, you can make as many changes to it as you want, and you'll only have to do the calculation once effectively. So notice if I decide that, actually I was, let's say I decide, okay, oops, I was wrong, width is not equal to 20, width is equal to 10. And it just goes and goes ahead and executes the code, and uh, this is now equal to 300. I can, if I decide length is, should actually be a thousand, it will happily tell me that area is equal to 10,000. Every time you re, uh, every time you redefine these, you can then go and uh, cascade through a very long sheet, and it will go and produce a new output and produce a, f a full new analysis for you. Well, maybe analysis is not the correct proper word, but it'll produce a, a final result. Now, um, with that, I should give one little caveat. Um, there is one option here, which is not going to be necessary for our purposes uh, in this lecture, because we're working with relatively simple sheet, uh, well, relatively simple sheets. But uh, some, on some cases, you might want to uh, disable auto calculation. So what does that do? Well, it's kind of in the name, but notice here. Let's say I redefine width is equal to 100. Notice now nothing changed. Why is that? Well, previously I had it set up so that um, whenever a um, whenever a change was made, that it would then go and cascade all the way through the sheet automatically. 
Now that's fine for this level of sheet. Uh, if we just have a, if you just have a one page document, that's perfectly fine. But when you start getting into sheets that are, you know, if you have a sheet that's like 30 pages long or something, just if you have an SMath file, it's 30 pages long and there's just, you know, dozens upon dozens of operations and variables. Every time you might be working on redefine on like editing one section of it and redefining one section of it. Every single time you make any kind of change, it wants to recalculate the entire thing. And especially if you have more advanced things in here, like, um, you know, we're looking at simple functions here, like, you know, multiplication, division, powers, things like that. But this thing can actually do some fairly complicated math. It can do things like numerical integrals. It can do summations. It can do basic graphing. And we will look at some of those later in this video series. But, um, but if you have all of those recalculating every single time you're defining, redefining anything in this sheet, that can start bogging down your computer and actually, you, not, you can actually start getting a lot of lag uh, just at, from every time you're redefining things and it's going to recalculate the entire sheet. So if you have very complicated worksheets, it can be very convenient or very useful simply to temporarily turn off the auto calculation. I'm going to leave it on simply because we're not dealing with anything fairly complicated. Another thing to note, um, well, let's see, I'm, I'm tempted to call this order of operations, but really that's a little, in a, that's a little imprecise what we're looking at, um, a little in, improper, I should say. Um, SMath works from beginning to end. Well, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in bold because I can, and I'm putting it in a text box and I'm going to make this all caps. SMath works from beginning to end. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say X equals, oh, I don't know, seven feet. Y, oh, that's not seven, um, that's seven, not Y. Y equals, actually, you know what, I'm gonna purposely, I'm trying to leave off the units yet. I'm just so automatically, in my head, I'm just so used to working with units in SMath, it just kind of pops right on out there. So, but I am trying to not work with units currently. We will get to those in a bit. So, y is equal to 8. And then, let's say that z is actually, well, I keep saying the word is equal to, but if I want to be extra proper, I should really say is defined as. So, x is defined as 7, y is defined as 8, and z, I'm going to define z as x times y, the simple product of x times y. All right, that sounds good. Um, and so I have a z is defined as x times y, and then I'm going to say press equal sign again to give me the output. Uh, z is defined as x times y, which is equal then to 56. Now, um, depending on the way, the way you're setting up your worksheet, sometimes if you want to change a value, um, you can just go back to the original uh, definition and change it to something like five here, and that's fine. But sometimes you might have a worksheet where you're trying to produce a uh, large number of repeat, or not a large number, but a number of repeated calculations uh, using some similar equations, and you might want to reuse variables again and again. Or what if you want to create an SMath sheet that um, maybe runs through two different design alternatives, and you're gonna have the same equations all the way through them, but you want to be able to preserve both sets of calculations because then the goal is that when you print it, you will have two full sets of calculations, um, but with different uh, parameters. Maybe you want, maybe you're looking at one pipe that's six inches wide, another pipe that is five inches wide, and you're trying to determine the acceptable pressure drop or something like that, the head loss, um, some sort of fluid mechanics thing. Um, again, um, not again, but... Um, well, I guess so, yeah, why not? Again, if you are, um, because SMath works from beginning to end, you can do this. So let's explore, let, let me actually show you what I mean by this. So if I go here and say now X is defined as six, this is not back looking, this is not back referencing. So I have auto calculation on. Right now I have auto calculation on. Um, Z, X is, after basic, uh, after this X is redefined as six or X is defined as six, anything afterwards is going to use this new value of X. But Z, if I'd say Z equals, oh, 
Oh, that should not, that's not quite working right. Like I would expect. Hmm. Let's see, x is defined as six. Oh, and I guess it is possible to make errors on this. Ah, that's why. So this is another slight uh, issue in that if I go and, and again, this this comes down to the fact that Z is, that uh, S math is backwards looking. So if I just tell it right now that uh, X is six, it's not actually going to redefine, uh, it's not going to recalculate the equation for Z. So if I just say Z is equal to, if I just say Z and then equal sign, it's just going to say Z equals 56. And the reason for that is that even though I provided a new value for X here, I haven't asked SMath to recalculate Z. So what I need to do is I need to say, okay, Z is defined as X times Y again. Or I could simply go back and copy and paste. And now it uses the updated value for uh, X. Even though I have the exact same function definition, Z equals X times Y, I am now, um, whenever I recalculate uh, Z, Anytime after this um, location here, it's going to use this new redefined value of X. Let's explore another example of this. So, or another uh, instance of this. So what were to happen or what would happen if I were to move this upward? Now this uh, Z also changes to 48. Why is that? Let's go back. Let's put it back and see what happens again. Hmm. Let's see here. Let's have it. Let's ask it to auto recalculate. There we go. That way it didn't, it didn't want to auto recalculate properly there for whatever reason. So now, so again, if I have, um, let's go back to the way it was, the way I had it. Ask it to recalculate. Do I have uh, auto calc on? Yes. Okay. So what is happening here is that first I'm telling SMath X is defined as seven. Next, I am telling SMath, oh, oops, never mind. X is actually defined as six. So, uh, and then Y is defined as eight. So it's going through and working through the calculation saying, okay, uh, yeah, yes, ma'am, that's fine. Z is equal to X times Y, and therefore Z is equal to 48. And now if I move this down, I'm going to ask this to recalculate it again, because sometimes this have difficulty if you just move things around like that. Um, now what's happening is first I tell X, is, I tell it X is equal as X is defined as seven. Then I tell S math X is defined as eight. Then I define, then I tell it, okay, Z is defined as the product of X times Y. And it says, okay, gotcha. The result of that is 56. Now I tell it, okay, X is defined as six now. And Z, well, I'm still using the same definition of Z. That's equal to X times Y. That's equal to 48. Okay. So actually then, let's see if that was a little error we had before. If I could go and uh, redo, the, uh, redo the calculation. Uh, let's redo that. Nope, again, it's not going to actually recalculate it until it has a line where it's asked to recalculate something. So in other words, what is happening is that um, in its memory, uh, fundamentally what's happening is in the background, SMath has a big uh, array or big memory of various functions and variables. And it basically keeps those completely unchanged unless it sees one of these uh, defined as uh, symbols. So uh, here it's saying, okay, well, uh, it's being told that Z is defined as X times Y, but it's not going to re-alter that calculation regardless of what I define X as until I read, I tell it to, uh, I tell it, uh, to recalculate x times y. Again, it only runs the calculation when it sees a uh, defined as symbol. So uh, again, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, be aware of the order that things calculate in SMath. SMath works from beginning to end. If you want it to redefine it, if you want it to, um, if you want to uh, have it recalculate something, you need to tell it to recalculate something. But then once it's actually defined or once a calculation result is produced, it is then uh, referenceable throughout the entire um, rest of the worksheet, no matter how long it may be. I could have, you know, 300 pages of 
uh, equations after this, as long as I never redefine z, I could still use this variable, this uh, z. I could simply say, okay, some function is equal to some um, operations of z, z squared, z to the third, cosine of z, doesn't matter. Um, but uh, that value for z will be retained throughout the worksheet. Okay, so that's the basic uh, way that SMATH works. Uh, I keep wanting to say order of operations, but every time I say I think of the word order of operations or the phrase order of operations, I think of you know the algebraic definition of that. But I suppose that might be, uh, that might work well for here. But maybe I should just say the order of calculations. SMATH's order of calculations is from beginning to end. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, so next, I kept prom I've been promising that we're going to look at units, and um, I get we will get to that. But I think first I'm going to show you a little bit of trivia. Not really trivia, just another way of defining variables or another way of entering variable names. So one neat little trick of uh, SMATH, especially for those in the engineering and sciences, is let's talk about subscripts. Uh, SMATH is capable of subscripts. So if I want to have, let's say, uh, not just x, but x1, notice that I have an x sub 1 now. How did I do that? Well. I type the letter X, then to get a subscript, I press a uh, period, and that will lower the uh, that will lower it down, lower the cursor down into a subscript, and I can let me I can enter a variable, I can enter a number, I can enter, you know, I can enter a, a string of characters as long as I want. It doesn't matter, but this is now just part of the variable name. So X sub one is then let's say defined as nine, whatever that might be. And then I could go and say, okay, um, let's do h sub e, whatever that might be, is defined as x times uh, x sub 1. So I'm telling it, again, h sub e is equal to, the variable h sub e is defined as the product. Oh, that's too boring. Let's do a quotient. Uh, we did a quotient. We did a, we've done products already, so let's do a quotient. Select that, get rid of that. There, now. SMATH selecting things and working with, and editing uh, variables does take a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not too bad. So x over x sub 1. And that comes to uh, 2 thirds in this case, or 0.667. So you can use subscripts um, just by entering a, uh, a period and that will lower your cursor to the point of um, having a subscript. Okay, at long last, let's finally get to units. Oh, I actually want to do that using a text box. So units. How do we define units? Well, it's actually not too bad. So there's two ways to look at this. There's two reasons we might, be, we might need to use uh, units. One as uh, units in variable definitions. And two, and I'm using my text, my famous uh, text boxes here again, uh, units as displays. So um, let's look at the first one first. Let's go, actually, maybe let's go ahead and move that down. And you can, just as, just as we've seen a little bit here and there, you can move these variables and labels and everything else around just like you would in um, most, uh, in, a lot, in many um, word processing programs. So units and variable definitions. So now um, let's say I want to go and define um, I don't know, um, maybe the, the variable u, u sub 1, just why not make it make it interesting. Actually, no, let's make this even more interesting. Let's use Greek alpha, let's use the Greek alphabet. So I'm going to come over here and say, ah, let's do beta. Let's say beta sub 1 is equal to, um, let's see, what do we could do length, we could do width, we could do time. Um, what do we want to do? Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and do um, length for this one. And I'm going to do, um, let's say, 12. And I want to do meters. So um, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, by default, if you just start putting a letter in the definition part, it's going to think you're trying to define some sort of unit. Or another way you could do that is to just, um, you could put a time symbol in if you have it, if, once you have your cursor in the right place. You can put a time symbol in and then put a unit in, um, but either way is fine. 
So um, I'm just going to put in an M and it's, again, then it pops up the auto suggest menu. And um, I'm going to go ahead and select meters here. So you double click on that and notice, now look very closely at this. Notice the color has changed. The color of that is no longer black as everything else is, it is blue. And there's a very keen reason for this. Any blue text, I'm sure you can change this, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you can, there's ways to change this if you want. Anything in a program like this can probably be configured and changed. But by default, anything that is blue is a unit. And that is crucial because, um, again, S math speaks units. That was the key takeaway, or one of the key take takeaways of the first lecture is that S math speaks units. And so, um, that's why it, what, that's why it goes to the trouble actually highlighting them as a separate color. It is saying this is basically SMath is a fairly un, uh, understated program, but this is SMath's equivalent of a giant flashing neon sign saying, "Look out! This is a unit. Stand back! I'm going to use units." Um, so this is a unit, and so you need to be careful. You're using the right units. You're, you need to be careful. You're not telling it to do impossible things with units like adding length plus volume, like I did in lecture one which is of course impossible. So again, this is saying there is a unit represented here and that it's going to apply unit conversions to this, to any operation using this variable. So that's the first way. Um, and also let's go ahead and say, um, or maybe we can do like a beta two. And uh, just to make, uh, just to make both uh, fans of the English system and the metric system mad. I'm just going to combine both of them. Why not? Because I am mad with power and I, it's my program and I can do whatever I want. Well, actually it's not my program, but it's my video. It's my copy of the program, but I did not write it the program. I am not that clever. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I am mad with power. And so I'm going to mix unit systems and there's nothing you can do to stop me. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and say beta two is equal to Oh, I don't know, seven inches, seven. And I select uh, in the autocomplete menu, inches. Oh, let's see, or I could, I could also do something like X equals eight. Okay, another way to do this is that if I already have, if I don't want to use the autocomplete menu, um, let's look at another way to look at this. So I could say seven inches and then press uh, shift enter and that will accept the uh, input as inches. What happens if I just put enter? So I say inches and that also works in that case. Shift enter, enter. Um, either will work in that case. But again, we, we're, we know that it works because the label is blue. So you can press enter or you can just uh, use the drop down menu. There are different ways you can do that. So here again, we are defining units at, in part of the variable definition. And these can get fairly complex. Like if I wanted to, I could have, um, I'm using fairly simple units, just like length dimensions right now, but you can use as complicated a thing as you want. Like you could have um, capital alpha here. That looks too much like an A. Let's use a delta is, oh, I don't know. Um, let's say, uh, let's make a unit that will make um, both English and metric fans just scream in horror. Let's do that. I'm going to just terrify everyone. So let's say I have, uh, 579, uh, let's do inches, no kilograms per, and, uh, per foot, except that's too boring. Let's do kilograms per cubic foot. And that's, that's okay. But we can do stranger. So let's do uh, kilograms to the three half power. Kilograms to the three half power per, per cubic foot. Oh, that's still too boring. Let's do uh, to the negative foot. And then say, okay, 579, or sorry, delta. If I output it, ask this thing to, to output this tortured unit. Well, it's, it's actually going to go ahead and convert this to um, metric as best it can because here is a little hint is that uh actually i'm going to use a lot of uh, english units in this thing uh, in this in this video series because i am based out of the u.s and we like our freedom units here our freedom units um but uh anyway but 
On the back end, it does use a metric for basically everything. Um, so every time you enter an English unit, it's actually in its head converting it to metric, doing its, all of its calculations there in metric, in metric standard units. And then it's going to just output, it, it'll happily output the result to whatever unit system you want or units you want. But um, ultimately it's going to be, um, uh, but its actual calculations are done in metric. So if you just tell it to display something, it's going to display it in uh, in the metric system, but that we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So units as displays. So now let's say I want to do, um, oh, let's say I want to define something that's just the sum of these two. And maybe I'm going to say, okay, alpha is defined as, uh, let's do beta period for the subscript, beta one plus beta uh, period two for the subscript there. And it now knows that alpha is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2. Next, I want to get, I want to produce the output of this. And I can do that in a couple ways. I could, like we saw previously, there's a couple ways to do this. I could either put an equal sign on the other side, or I could define it as another entry, um, either on the same line or on the next line. And so I'm just going to do it on the next line and say, okay, I don't want to use the uh, uh, colon and the colon equal sign because that's going to be redefining the function. Instead, I'm just going to press the equal sign and that will produce a result in meters. Well, it will produce a result in meters until I tell it I want something differently. Again, by default, SMath is going to produce everything in uh, the metric system. Um, but, because uh, again, it's doing all of its calculations in metric on the back end. Uh, it saw that uh, when it was doing the calculations, the first thing it did was convert that inches, that value of inches into meters. And now it's just adding the 12 meters plus however many meters. Well, actually we can just, it's 0.1778 uh, meters. And then it's outputting the results in meters. Let's say though, I don't like that. Um, for whatever reason, I want something different. So what I'm gonna do is if I, hi if I click in the box here, I have this, um, I have this square here and that represents a place, or that is a place where I can tell SMath what units I want my result to be in. So I put my cursor there and then I can start typing. So if I want English units, I press IN for inches and it'll give me an, uh, some, um, it'll give me some autocomplete options or I could just uh, shift enter and I have inches. So it's equal to that many inches. Interestingly enough, if I don't want that many um, decimal places, I could go and um, I can change this to say two decimal places. Or if I really want it to be odd, I could even put that as a fraction if I wanted an exact value, although I have no idea why I would do that in this case, but you could if you wanted to. Okay, or what if I want something more esoteric? Um, what if I want this in light years? Can I do that? Uh, can I do, oh, let's actually, let's get rid of this annoying fraction. Let's do decimal. Can do light years. Oh, I thought I'd be able to do light years. Maybe not. I could define a light year, and that, that's maybe something we'll look at later. Um, so let's. But I could go and put it in. Okay, let maybe I could want it in millimeters. It does know most of our uh, SI prefixes. I could put. I wonder. If, oh, it doesn't know yada meters. Fine. Uh, what if I want picometers? It does. And it will happily return a value in a very large um, power of scientific notation, in this case 10 to the 13th, that um, if for whatever reason I want to know it in picometers, it's happy to tell me that 12 meters plus 7 inches is 1.12 times 10 to the 13th picometers. Um, it has not, it, it probably uh, is judging me and thinking me a little strange, but that's fine. I am a little strange. That's okay. Okay, uh, and that's the basic way of working with units in SMath. You have um, units as an input, you have units as displays, and it does take a little bit of practice. It can take a little bit of practice and finagling to get certain uh, units to work, but there are um, ways to make almost any of it work. Or to perform any kind of calculations, any kind of conversions. Once you get it down, it is a bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. Um, other examples of how it might handle things. So. What happens if I were to take beta 1 to the third power? Let's say uh, gamma is equal to, or I keep saying is equal to, I should say, is defined as, um, let's say uh, beta 1 to the third power. Now, if you think about, the th now so just for a second, think about the dimensions here. 
beta is a length. So if I take a length to the third power, I should have a volume. Um, so if I go and now ask, ask it to output by pressing equal sign, it will tell me that uh, that 12 meters, uh, basically a volume 12 meters on a side, is uh, 1,728 cubic meters. Okay, that's fine. What if I don't want cubic meters? Uh, what if I want some odd unit or a different unit? What if I want foot um, cubed? What if I want cubic feet? Now, if I first just say feet, it's not going to like that. Um, it's going to recognize that a foot is not the same as it does not have dimensions of length to the third. So it's going to need to modify what I output. Like it's not going to be able to output just feet. It's going to have to cap. It's going to have to tack on a couple meters there. So. If you are entering a function and you, if you tell it to output in one unit, um, if you're expecting a certain output, in this case feet, and it adds these other extraneous units, what that means is you have some sort of error present in your, your calculation. Usually that's what that means. Or you're uh, anticipating a dimension that is not there. Uh, so in other words, if I think that feet should come out of this calculation, I'm mistaken. There, there should be a cubic feet or a cubic inches or some other unit of volume. So here, let's go back here and redefine this. I'm going to go ahead and delete. Uh, let's get my cursor in the right place. Delete this. Say equals, and I want to get this back. And now I'm not just going to press. I'm not just going to only leave it at feet. I'm going to uh, enter at the feet. Control uh, Shift Enter at feet, and then I'm going to go power and get use the power symbol and um or carrot i should say and um or if you just want to know exactly what i pressed shift six and <laughs> enter feet to the third power and now it works just fine because it knows what a foot to the third power is it knows that that is equivalent to a volume that is a volume unit and that it can directly convert to that number that's a that's a ridiculous number of uh, decimal places okay anyway or it doesn't even have to be cubic units. It could any uh, volume unit will be valid for this type of output. So I could go and put in liters, and it will happily output the number of liters that that is equal to. Um, and there are other ways to display things as well. You can actually have it display things in uh, significant figures. You can have things to use different. You can have it use uh, uh, different rounding values. You can use uh, auto uh, auto mode, which is a mixture of fractions and um, decimals, depending on what it thinks is best, uh, etc. Okay, but that's the basic idea of working with units in um, in SMath. So what we have now seen is we have seen how to um, define variables, how to define functions, and now how to define units. And that's going to be the basic operation of SMath. All right, I think that'll do it for this portion of the video series. I think in lecture three, we'll go and look at some basic examples. So hopefully you found this illuminating or revealing, um, and hopefully it wasn't too strange or too hard to follow. But uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.